But look, it, you have what is arguably pound for pound the best bike rider in the world. He's got an amazing team. They certainly, he didn't just tell it to a journalist at the start line. He probably said it in the team meeting. Hey guys, FYI, I'm going to go with 40% of the race left. Think about that. 40%. That's, I mean, if you go with 10%, I'm just breaking it down to numbers. If you go with 10% of the race to go, people look at you like, whoa, that might be a little early. 40 if he calls that in the team meeting, hell yeah, they're going to the front. I'm like, all right, well, he's not going to let us down. Hey. hey, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, talking about the 2024 Strati Bianchi, the race over the white roads. What, what, a, what, a, what a beautiful part of the world. George and I, of course, George is joining us. What up, George? What's up? Yeah, we had a nice week. Hello. We had a- we had a nice dinner there in April, uh, where the finish was in that in that square. That was that was fun. It, it it's um, for those who just like to travel and ride bikes. I don't know if you've got a bucket list or a top three or, or you know or whatever. This place is. I'm just telling you as a as a person who likes to do those things. It's some of the best riding in the world. And right, I mean, whether if you like gravel, check that box. If you like. Um, you know, hard roads, that box is certainly checked, as we saw today, with 4,000 meters of total vert. Um, not a lot of cars, checks that box. People that love bikes, checks that box. It, it's just a beautiful part of the world to pedal. Good food and, let's and not, wine. Let's not, let's not forget the Tour de France is starting right around there as well. <laughs> That's a good That's point. Exciting. It is. Yep. It, it is. Also joined by J, uh, yeah, JB right down there in Austin, right over there in yeah. Austin. What up, JB? I'm doing good, man. This is good. And JB won. Johan Brunel, Johan, what's up? All good, guys. Nice to be back together to talk about this beautiful race. Do you, you got logged out? Everything good? Nothing's going to pop up? I'm freaking Everything's good. Out. All safe. <laughs> okay, good. Before we get into the action, and there was action, there was, there was, there was one moment of action, right, in Tadej Pogacar, which was everybody's favorite. Uh, he didn't disappoint. We're going to break all that down. Um, been a minute in cycling since we've seen a performance like this. I don't think anybody is surprised by uh, his strength, but the way he went about it, yeah, like I said, it has been a minute. Today's show is brought to you by Zwift in the middle of indoor cycling season. And our We Do Club is popping up with over 1,500 members joining our weekly rides. We Do Wednesday is a casual cafe ride, which is, sounds more like mine, my speed. And Suffer Sunday, that's for all our suffer lovers. There's never been a better time to get started riding indoors with Zwift. Zwift Smart Trainer, the Zwift Hub, is now better, is a better value than ever for only 599 bucks. Not only do you get a smart trainer with a pre-installed cassette of your choice, but you also get this no fuss setup and a one-year uh, uh, subscription to Zwift. But you can also get free shipping when you enter the code Zwift Hub at checkout. Head on over to Zwift.com and grab your Zwift Hub. Don't forget to use that code Zwift Hub for free shipping. And when you do join us, seriously, uh, we do Wednesdays and suffer Sundays. Also today brought to you by Bicycle. Bicycle has evolved the way pre-owned bikes are bought and sold. We're a band of riders building a community who expect more from their bike marketplace, more security, more clarity, and more connection. Selling a bike has never been easier. Based on the bike brand, model, and condition, our algorithm suggests a selling price to help you move your bike quickly and our template makes it easy to create a listing in less than three minutes. All you got to do is head on over to Buy Cycle. That's B U Y, right? Like you're buying. B U Y C Y C L E dot com. And make sure you use the code WE DO 24. That removes the seller fee when you're selling your bike. All right. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about this. I mean, this, this, I have a lot of thoughts and, and, and it's fun. I was, was watching, I watched about three hours. Well, I watched more than three hours of Strati Bianchi because it, we would be totally remiss if we didn't talk about the women's race because uh, Lada Capecchi was exceptional, battled through cramps, stayed with Longo Brigini uh, up until the final climb and then dominated the final climb. So I watched about four hours of it. First, let's, we'll focus on, on the men's race. Here you got a guy, Tati Pogachar, who... All right. We just said it. Everybody picked him to win. He shows up at the start line and announces, I'm going to attack with 80 kilometers to go on a certain climb. 
nobody does that. And what does he do? He just does it. He just does it and rides away. The conditions at that moment, the condition, it was weird. It was between beautiful sunshine and sort of pissing down rain. Um, he does exactly what he said he was going to do on the start line and rides away. He could have won by more than five minutes, I suspect. If he That's wanted. a Babe Ruth move, right? Pointing to where you're going to hit the home run. Yeah, Joe Namath, <laughs> Babe Ruth. You know, all the Pogachar fans out there are like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Johan, Johan, you're, 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 you're our resident historian. I mean, when have we seen that? I, 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 and I want to come over the top after you answer. I have a thought the last time I sort of saw anything remotely like that. When's the last time you saw that? The last time I know of something like that is when, I mean, Frank Van den Broek announced in Liège-Bastogne-Liège mid-90s, I guess, uh, late 90s. <laughs> he said he was going to attack there, uh, did it, won the race. I haven't seen anything like it. Um, you know, you can question, okay, why, why does he say that? Um, I, I don't know if initially he was thinking of going 80 kilometers by himself. Probably he said, okay, I'm going to attack there to try to get a few others with him and then, you know, eliminate the risk of be getting caught tactically. But man, I mean, let's, let's not forget, you know, if you, if you look the way he, the way he goes, it's, it's Tim Wellens who sets it up. They're already strung out. And then you have Sepp Kuss, who is the Vuelta España winner, just getting dropped from the wheel on this climb. And, that was it. I mean, from there on, I think the only question was, okay, with how much is he going to win this race? You know, it was not a question anymore is if he was going to win, it was by how much. And, and, or is there some sort of bad luck, a mechanical yeah. with yeah. the conditions could have had a crash. I mean, yes, those are the only questions. So I, I think, I think we need to go um, rewind a bit to the start of the race. I mean, UAE was already on the front. When I turned the TV on with hundred K to go, there's only 40 guys left. Not really a breakaway. Quinn Simmons was up the road by 25 seconds, but that's an indication of how hard it was. They basically rode like they were in the yellow jersey of the Tour de France, controlling the race from, from the start. In a one-day race like that, you're guaranteed to have a breakaway go. That's just the way racing goes. There was no breakaway. So that's mm -hmm. how fast UAE was riding. The field was already 40 guys, 40, 50 guys that, with 90K to go, just from UAE on the front pulling. Um, so yeah, he must've had just an, ex well, he not, not must've, he had an extraordinary day to be able to just, like you said, Johan drop Sepp Kuss and these guys right off of his wheels, not even really look back. Well, yeah. a, a few, a few things. I, my sources tell me that Sepp Kuss has been a little sick. He did not feel great this morning. Okay. Uh, so, so there's that. Um, but look, it, it, you have what is arguably pound for pound, the best bike rider in the world. He's got an amazing team. They certainly, he didn't just tell it to a journalist at the start line. He probably said it in the team meeting. Hey guys, FYI, I'm going to go with 40% of the race left. Think about that. 40%. That's, I mean, if you go with 10%, I'm just breaking it down to numbers. If you go with 10% of the race to go, people look at you like, whoa, that might be a little early. 40%. If he calls that in the team meeting, hell yeah, they're going to the front. I'm like, all right, well, he's not going to let us down. Hey. What's even more shocking, in my opinion, Lance, is, you know, okay, he does announce that, but let's not forget, this is his first race of the year. I mean, yep. how can you, I mean, how good do you have to be and how sure and confident do you have to be and what, you know, how hard have you trained to be able to say the first race of the year, a super hard race, this is where I'm going to go and doing it and basically okay. destroying the whole field. I, That's just I, I, shocking. I have news for you. It's not that special. Because if you go look at the go look at the last four years, the last four years he's won the first yeah. race of his no. season. Yeah. So this is this is whatever he's doing in the off season, or leading up to that first race, the the fine tuning, the preparation, whatever it is, he knows what he's doing. So four years in a row, coming off an off season, whatever again, whatever that entails, straight into whatever. I mean, some of those races were stage races. Uh, he's won the UAE Tour twice. He won the race in Spain last year, which was his first race. But he knows how to come off the couch, so to speak, and For win sure. his first race. The one thing I did want to say, Johan, just to, to my earlier question, um, the the at least in my career, I, I remember. Do you remember? Nineteen ninety four. No, I remember. So obviously, Gavis had that exception. I mean, just destroyed everybody at at um, Flesh Malone. Uh, but then we came. We went straight to Liège, and there was one moment in the race where. Um, I looked around and there were five of us, right? It was me, Rominger, 
Argentine, maybe uh, a Furlan and De La Santa with 80 kilometers to go. And I, I, and it was eerily quiet. I was like, where, 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 where did everybody, what are we going to do now? What do we do? And I, that's, I, we just, it's been forever since you saw anything like that. Yeah. I, I got an idea just for fun around the room, your longest solo win, when did you go? What was your longest? I was probably in a breakaway with Johan Bernil in the uh No but solo. I, I, like like Pagat. Yeah, no, Limoges. I was in a break. Yeah, Limoges in 1995 Tour okay. de France after the death of Castrotelli. Mm. Um yeah, that, was, was long, uh, that was a yeah, long that was a that was that was I mean uh, yeah. 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 It that yeah, was for sure. I remember Lance. You know, know Johan was trying so hard. He was trying to get everybody organized. I said, "No, come on." I said, I said Listen. "Come on." You know what I? You know what I remember of that? I said, "When you went, I said, where the hell does this crazy American think he's going?" <laughs> and I, I do remember that you knew back then. That the moment you were gone, you said you were sure yeah. you were gone. Yeah. How far? How far out was that in kilometers? Do you remember? I think 50, 60 k. I mean, I don't I, very, very was, far. We'd have crazy. To go. I, it, I, I think that's more than what it was. But it, it was, you know, it was the, the longest I've ever sent it. Uh, oh, Henny Kuiper, our director sport the sportif at the time, kept coming up. Ah, oh, your time's this. I finally, I was kind of sick of him coming up. I said, Henny, don't come up here anymore. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not getting caught. So just go drive behind. Just, just stay in the back. Make sure I don't. You know. You guys, George? I don't think I ever had a solo pro win. I mean, you're usually sprint in a sprint, or, sprint situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a pretty. It's not a rare thing, but what 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 Pogachar did today was certainly very rare. But um, like we keep saying, he called it out the before even before the race, which is just crazy to be able to to say that and uh, and, and and actually pull it off. So 250 meters is the longest. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah, Yo Johan. I don't. I don't. I mean, oh, yeah, I don't know. Well, you had, you had that stage in the tour. Well, yeah, but that, um, yeah, the one that I arrived solo. The fast, I guess. The yeah. yeah, the fat. Yeah, the fastest. Yeah, yeah, that was like that was a long. I mean, it was a long breakaway, and then I did the last twenty k on my own or something. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. twenty thirty kilometers probably. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. You know, want to spend useless energy. I just wanted to give our <laughs> listeners some, you know, some scope of how oh, it's, insane this is. It, it, it is, yeah, crazy. and, it's and crazy. a lot of people were asking him why would you go so early. And, I mean, in a race like Strada Bianca, Johan, you touched upon it a little bit. It's actually quite dangerous on the gravel roads. We saw Quinn Simmons crash. There are times when, even though you're just riding along, paying attention, your front wheel just gets stuck in a piece of mud, and there's nothing you can do. So Ben Healy had the same. Yeah, Ben Healy, ben Healy and so Pogachar might even be thinking, "Shit, I broke my wrist last year. I don't want to take any risks. I'm good. Why not minimize yeah. my risk? I'm good. I'm going to go as." as far out as possible ride my own pace super windy up and down there's never a straight road in tuscany um so he just he just went for it pretty incredible. I just think, you keep in yeah. mind it was 20 or 30 guys there i mean this yeah. is we're not talking but, about a, 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 a true quote-unquote peloton there's 20 or 30 guys so that's uh not that that's easy to do but that's a small enough group that you're gonna have people looking at each other looking for responsibility who who does any effort to pull him back and you capitalize on that. Right. It, 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 and yes, it is a heck of a lot safer to, to be out there and, and control the corners yourself and control your effort yourself. He also knows he has races coming up. I mean, don't think for a second, he didn't get up to, what did he get to uh, three and a half minutes? He didn't just, he, he was already thinking about, okay, how many days do I have to recover? When is mm -hmm. my next race? Like he starts throttling back. This is over. Do not crash conserve energy and think about what I have next. But well, do you guys think, do you guys think that the moment he goes like with 80 K to go, do you think that already there, he is convinced, absolutely convinced he's going to go solo to the finish. Or do you think that initially it's an attack to see, okay, let's see if two guys can come with me. Then I'm safe tactically. I'm safe, you know, and then I'm the strongest. Anyway, I'm going to drop them later on. Or do you guys think that, okay, he went and he said, okay, I'm going 80 kilometers by myself. I think in a, in a normal scenario, yes, you'd want you'd want to be with two or three guys, but you can tell he accelerated in the saddle and he looks back quickly. And there's a moment there where perhaps he can let up and wait for Seb Kuss or one of those other guys and and have some help. But he didn't even consider it. I, yeah, I think no. he, he in his mind he wanted to go solo and he knew that he could most likely make it. 
he 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 knew what he was doing he should have just said that in the interview oh by the way not only am i gonna attack here on so far to go and on this certain climb but i'm going alone (laughs) no he may as well just said that that would now that would have been dope as fuck if he just said that but i want to talk about what i I wanted i want to this is not to me this is not um I don't think this is all that's cracked up to be. I want to talk about, uh, yes, exceptional performance. Exceptional performance must be measured against the people that started the race, who was in the field. I want to talk about that. But before we do, today's show also brought to you by AG1. Check this out. And this is, I do not leave the house. Like whether I'm traveling, whether I'm at home, AG1 has been a complete game changer for me. All of us, actually, we got the whole team hooked on it. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last, I've been, I don't know, seven years, I've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel energized and focused. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and much more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. And if you're a clown like me, is really bad about eating all that stuff that you were supposed to eat like when you're in school you know the four for you know eat 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 as much color as you can i'm terrible at that but i got a hack and my hack is ag1 uh, if there is one product that i'd recommend it is ag1 check this out if you want to take ownership of your health start with ag1 try ag1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin d3 plus k2 and five free ag1 travel packs with your first purchase Head on over to drinkag1.com slash the move. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash the move. Also today brought to you by Caldera Lab. Gentlemen, we all know first impressions matter. And if you're not taking care of your skin, well, that's going to be the first thing someone notices and either thinks you're looking way older than you are and you just don't care about your appearance. Like the other day, I was with, we were some friends and there was a guy who was my age, he's 52 years old. This is a true story. And um, I don't know, I'm 52, but I'm like, I don't, I, I see 52 year olds that look 72. I'm like, I look like another, another dude, buff guy. And, and Anna's like, wow, he doesn't look 52. I was like, honey, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Clearly this dude was hitting the Caldera labs. Anyways, they create high performance men's skincare products and the regimen, it's the whole suite of products leads off their product lineup, a twice a day routine to transform your skin. You'll look more youthful, look more energized, look healthier. And by the way, I have stopped noticing some of those crow's feet around my eyes. Head on over to Caldera, that's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B, calderalab.com, 20% off right now. Use the code WEDU, W-E-D-U, calderalab.com. Use code WEDU. Last one, Mando. We got a bunch of, well, we have one man dough on this show. George, I know you're all into your, you're all into this, this care stuff. You know, how you, I am, I am. I'm, I'm all about the Caldera and now the Mando. Uh, I've been traveling with it. I love it. Smells great. Aluminum free. Uh, just a great way to uh, keep it fresh. Under Check the this out. They, they, these guys actually went out and did a clinical study. So men who showered with soap. And used Mando whole body deodorant, you know, like deodorant under their armpits. They had an odor score of zero out of ten after twelve hours. That's crazy. Meanwhile, the 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 other set. What of about subjects, what about your sweaty ass again? Hold on, I, I think I, I'm thinking you're less than twelve hours, but keep going. Anyways, they had a whole other set of of uh, people they tested, or guys they tested, and men who showered with soap alone had armpit odor of an eight out of ten after twelve. 12 hours whoa what a difference dude how about the creams for your stinky feet oh are you are you using that yet it's, it's i don't awesome <laughs> wow <laughs> they thought of everything <laughs> they, they have, have. They, they they have and and it's it's uh, to, to george's point aluminum free i mean i know there's a lot of a lot of people like to go through their cabinet and make sure they're using stuff that's not just good for the environment but also good f- uh, for the body so uh, look, if it's effective and uh, isn't causing any harm, hey, let's go. Make the switch to Mando whole body deodorant and smell like a zero every day. All you people that wanted to be hundreds, start with Mando. You're going to feel like a zero and smell like a zero. They got the whole body deodorant. 
Um, they have all these, look, I've got them all here. They got the wipes, check this out. Deodorant wipes, deodorant soaps. It's amazing. So uh, head on over to shop Mando, M-A-N-D-O, shopmando.com. Use the code we do. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code and link. That's we do at shopmando.com. All right. Look, I mean, we have to, we have to, we, we have to look at this objectively. I, I do th I look, the performance was exceptional. The declaration at the start was bold. I love it. I love everything about that. I'm not sure that any of that happens, especially the declaration or the sort of the, the proclamation. Uh, if, if you have the likes of Wout Van Art, Matthew Vanderpool, Remco Vanderpool, even a Primo's Roglic, you know, the, the other guy, I mean, there's this sort of Mount Rushmore of the current crop. Johan, I, I want to, uh, look, I think, I think Pogacar still wins the bike race. Keep but I think it's I, a, Van Art won it in 20 and Vanderpool won it in 21. They, I just, I just think it's a very different race with those guys in the field. Yeah. And it also leads to the other question of why they weren't in the race. Cause as a fan and you're watching this, you're like, wow, that, that is amazing. Like it looked so cool. The helicopter shots, the roads, the undulation, like you just, it looks like a race. I mean, look, I was watching going, fuck, I would love to be back there riding on those roads. So yeah. going, what, what happens if, if this Mount Rushmore is there? I think it's a different story it's a di for sure. For sure. He would be more careful, you know, because even if he drops them at the 80 K to go with those guys behind, there's absolutely no guarantee you stay away. Right. Um, I think, you know, before today's race, with all due respect to all the other riders, but, you know, the only guy that, in my opinion, Pogacar was worried about was Tom Pitcock, you know, last year's winner. Um, in my opinion, Pitcock was not on a super day. I mean, he was he was good. He got fourth and, and fought for his fourth place at the end, but he was never a factor in the race. And I, I, personally, I think that at the moment that Pogacar attacked, he already knew because you know you observe your your yep. rivals he already knew that 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 pitcock was not in a, in a super day so i think it's a totally different story with those guys at the at the start line but you know we can't take anything away from from the victory and also you know we especially van der Poel and van aert who are you know two big engines they have focused themselves on different objectives the you know the the cobbled classics they start a bit later uh, it's not part of their plan so um listen the guys who are not at the start line are always in the wrong you know you know it's, it's, you can only win if you show up so um well then well, i'll, I'll, I'll add, <clears throat> if, if those guys don't go their teams don't send the best support either no discredit to those True. riders who are Absolutely. there but they're not so the depth of the field as a whole is more than just those guys does that make sense i, 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 still, I still think though if you saw the way the, the riders came in one by one um it's rare it's rare in, in our sport to see you know, such a separation of groups, such a small group with uh, 90 K to go, only 40 guys left. And I think we got to give a shout out to Tom Scusions, got taken out in a crash by his teammate, Prince Simmons, obviously not on purpose, but was able to bridge back up to the group that he was in and then bridge back up to Van Gill's, uh, you know, 10 K later. So he had an incredible ride. It is on the way. Very up. strong I, performance. Very, very strong, very strong performance. Um, he's an alumni of my old team. So it makes me very happy to see him competing against the best in the world. You know, George Screens was the, you know, in Omlop, Omlop at Niesblatt, he was yeah. the guy who was putting yeah. Walt Van Aert in the hurt box. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, they said, I, uh, that's, yeah, I'd heard I mean, it looks like he got uh, actually he kept banged up a little bit. Yeah, it looked like a hard crash, too. I mean, his whole hip was, uh, the shorts were all open. And I mean, that's tough. That's tough to get over, but not only get over it, but get on the yeah. podium of such a big race. I think it's pretty I, special. I think if you see the top 10, the top 10 comes in one by one. I mean, wh when yeah. have we seen this for last time? I mean, one yeah. by one. The Listen, first 10 riders. We have talked about this before. This is what we collectively, the four of us sitting here, this is what we want, right? I mean, the, 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 is it boring to watch one guy ride around for two plus hours? Yeah, yeah, probably. But you know what's more boring? Is when 50 guys ride around and look at each other and try to measure and, and, and adjust. And and then that's boring too. This is, the, you know, the I love it when it looks like if you looked at the finish line you, you and you didn't and you just flew in from Mars, you would say, oh, they're just finishing a time trial. It's so, one by, you, by, you, like, you, I fucking love that. 
And you guys mentioned the, the, the depth of the competition. I mean, you can't forget uh, three guys in the top five were World Cup winners. I mean, with uh, obviously Bogachar, Pickcock, and, ben, um, and Mohoric. Yeah. I mean, they've all won some of the biggest races in the world. So there was uh, exceptional competition, maybe not, you know, missing the, the big three or four guys, but still the, the competition in these, this day and age um, to ride away from those guys for 80K to go is an incredible achievement. Yeah. What's what's for sure is that Pogacar is ready. I mean, he's ready. You know, he. I mean, I don't know what kind of impact it has when you see when he say when he sees Jonas Vingegaard start the season and you know win all the three stages. See Remco start in Portugal, wins the first race, then wins the Tour of Algarve. Uh, you know, these guys. I mean, I don't know what kind of motivation it is. They all want to win their first race, but I have. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I, I can't help to notice that. Pogacar is going to be on a different level this year. Uh, mm -hmm. He looks amazingly fit. In my opinion, he looked skinnier than before. Um, I don't know if that's just my impression or not, but if you see that performance during 80 kilometers, I, I wrote down in my notes here, I said, Pogacar, the metronome. You know, it's it's it, it was amazing. It was just that the cadence was constant. It was, there was no fighting with, you know, not with the hills, not with the roads, not with the bike. He was just, on his bike and just just driving it to the finish i mean it's, i mean it's yeah it's it is boring but at the same time i i, I mean i'm i'm so you know in admiration of performances like that, that, yep. that just, yep. it takes away the boredom yeah i think they're yep. they're the train has gotten so refined and this year we're seeing a lot of adjustments in calendars too pogachar is only racing 10 days before the giro giro then the tour uh, uh van art's not even racing until i think flanders and Roubaix is at an, an altitude training camp no, he does. Um, uh, he does E three, I think. Okay, so but he's very racing very little. You know, typically all these guys do either Paris uh, or Torino to get that stage racing in. Now they're going to altitude and doing their own Vanderpool, training. Two, Van der Poel, first Vanderpool, race in Milan San Remo. Milan San Remo, and he <laughs> and he'll be one of the favorites. I mean, yeah. we, I mean, this, so the way these guys are preparing for the big, the big, big races are completely different than anything we ever did back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. And I would be in favor of that. Boy, you. you, you if my two choices were to either do a race like Torino or Pyrenees or go to a training camp, I mean, come on. <laughs> Those yeah. two dumpy races, terrible weather, windy, bad hotels. Meanwhile, you can go train by yourself at altitude, 100%. And, and, and I, think, I think right now, the, the, the way these guys are, are looking at cycling and the way everything's calculated, it's, you know, they just want to make sure that they are – fully 100% prepared for their objective where before there was like the doubt okay if you don't do a stage race you're not ready you're not ready you don't have the competition rhythm sometimes it happens that when the race situation decides you don't get the hard work in that and these guys right now they train harder than they race actually I mean yeah. if you do Paris Nice it's possible that sometimes it's not hard it's headwind a, a stage is cancelled so they prefer to have a training block and say, okay, yeah. this is the work I'm putting in, and I'm yeah. sure with that work, I'm ready for my objective. Yeah, they control yeah. their they they control their environment. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm curious, what Johan? I know you watched all these races. The what's your early assessment? I know we haven't gotten a good look at Roglic yet, but Vingago, Remco, and Pogachar. Your first beginning of season assessment. They're ready. They're ready. I mean, the the three of them win their first race. Um. You know, it's going to be interesting to see them, you know, together. Uh, ne next week, we're seeing we're, we're seeing Remco against Roglic in Paris-Nice. Uh, we'll see Vingegaard in, in Tireno. Uh, Pogacar won't, won't meet them yet, but um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Roglic will show up in Paris-Nice. Not only, not only, did, they win their, not not only did they win their first race, but the way they all won their first race mm -hmm. with these, you know, 50, 30 to, to 80K solo attacks just a, a, a level above the rest of their, their the field. So it's, I'm sure they're all watching in awe of uh, what, what they're doing and, and looking forward to racing against each other. I know we are as fans going to be uh, looking forward to watching them race against each other. And a little bit of history. If you go back and, and we touched on how this is, some have lobbed the idea, is this a, a new monument? Just because it is. It, it's epic. It's interesting. It's, it's beautiful to watch. It's probably fun as hell to race. Uh, it's only been around 18 years. Right, the, the true monuments, right? And we're talking about San Remo, Lombardia, Liège, Flanders, Roubaix. Uh, they've been around for 100 years plus. 
So hard to put it in that category, but it's fun to go down the rabbit hole of saying, how did they even, I mean, they started the race in 2007, 2007 was the first edition. It was actually a spinoff of uh, an, a, an Italian grand fondo called the uh, Monte Pasci Eroica, which mm -hmm. is on the same roads. It's, it's, maybe it's the same course, but it's basic, you know, you get the drift. But uh, the whole shtick on that Grand Fondo, Eroica, is that you have to ride it on vintage bikes. So you have to show up. And I don't know what the, what the bar is or, or how they determine what is, quote, unquote, vintage. I don't think they're out, of, out there on high wheelers, but they're riding on old bikes. There's three, I, there's three, there's three rule lines. Okay, good. Pedal, uh, pedals with toe clips. Toe straps. Yeah. Uh, shifters on the frame. Okay, hold on. And, uh, and down tube. Down, down tube shifters. Uh, uh, index or friction allowed? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, brake cables. You can't ride with hidden cables. And any restrictions on, because, you know, if you go back and you truly rode a vintage bike, you'd have a straight block or something crazy on the back. You wouldn't have a, I mean, look <laughs> yeah, at the roads. No. If you watch the race, you see how steep they were yeah. in the gravel when it's wet. You imagine having to ride that with maybe not a straight block, but with a 21 as your maximum cog in the back. I don't That's think hard. They, they can't I, do that for a ground. I would, yeah, they would, yeah. They would not be able no. to make it. We could go look on YouTube and see some of the participants and go, yeah, no, they probably fudged on the uh, gearing. <laughs> um, but uh, but that it would, that's how the race came to be. They had mm -hmm. the Eureka thing. It, it was very, very popular. Uh, if you go back or if you even look online, you'll see, I mean, people show up and they don't stop with the bikes, man. They got the wool jerseys. They got the fucking goggles on. There are probably some people the rolling tubes. around with tubes <laughs> around their shoulders. <laughs> You know, looking yeah. like like copy or something, but it's. I think it's. I think it's. It's. I mean, I, in watching it, you know, there's very few races, personally speaking, that I watch, and I'm like, man, I want to go out and ride my bike. <laughs> Th this is one of those, man. It's like it's just cool, and I guess I'm a little uh, biased because we were not, you know, we were there not that long ago. It, it's it's a fun race to watch. Mm. Agreed. I would I would have loved to seen that Mount Rushmore duking it out. I mean, I think it's. And in, in, in a race that is that demanding, where you have one by ones coming at the finish line, you want uh, it would be so badass to have the best of the best there. I think it's hard to get them all together all the time because they keep checking boxes. Yeah, and they yeah. don't want to. Like, I've they done don't, it. They, they yeah. don't want to face off. No. There's some gamesmanship there on mm. when they. You know, the, the, I don't think they're on a Slack channel discussing. All right, when's our first showdown? <laughs> but they, there is some posturing there amongst those guys, for sure. Especially, especially Vingegaard versus Pogacar. I mean, the yes. first time we're going to see them together is in the Tour de France. So this, that's not a coincidence. Yeah. 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 Um, let's talk about the women's race for a sec, because Lada Kopecky was so good. She didn't – you could see her in the finale stretching, standing up, stretching. I didn't know if she was stretching her back post-race comments that she was cramping pretty bad, but they had the race controlled. You know, she had Demi there with her. Interesting, you know, a lot. I mean, these dominant women that we saw last year, they were all there again. They mm -hmm. were there. Boom. So it was, that, that was, um, I, I look, I, I, I could compare the two races. Both performances were exceptional. I thought the women's race for as much as I saw, which was about an hour. I, I don't, I can't, you know, I can't set the alarm that early. Um, I thought, you know, I thought it was, uh, if I had to pick one, if you asked which one was more interesting, I think the women's weight race was more interesting. It was, there was more there. There was more, it was more of a battle. Yeah, there was well, more tactics a... going on and, no. and, you know, it was unknown. I mean, even at the end, you know, even when Longo Borghini was, was away with Lotto Kopecky. Okay. Normally Lotto Kopecky should get it, but Longo Borghini is on a, you know, she's on a, she's on a roll and she's super strong and, and a home uh, race and, and yeah, racing, exactly. you know, that's, that's exactly. got, she's wearing the Italian champion Jersey. She's at, uh, Strada Bianchi, Donne, um, a lot of, the, the, there's a lot of extra horsepower involved with that. Mm -hmm. And that finish is just, uh, it's a perfect for, you know, a three to 10 person group to get to the finish of that really steep climb with the, with the, not, it, they're not cobblestones, but it's sort of a concrete, uh, asphalt, um, pavement. I've done it before. It's super steep. It's hard. There's thousands of people on the side of the road. You kind of want to see more than one person duking it out up that climb. Uh, so I think I would agree with you guys that that was a much more exciting finish. And and the Tifosi, 
Yeah. Right. The tifosi for y'all who don't know that's in in Italian the tifosi is like the the fans, the fan mm-hmm. base, these rabid fans. You saw them if you watched the race. Man, hats off to the tifosi because uh yes, they were out there uh, for the men's race, but boy, the, nothing there was no difference in terms of what I could see with the tifosi from the women's race to the men's race and we talk a lot about just it, you know, whether it's looking at sponsorships and contract. You're looking at the contracts that that for example, Timmy Bowling got amazing, right? Then you see the Tifosi there just as passionate about the women's race. Like, hell yeah. It's awesome. And, you know, as the women's season shapes up, uh, Johan pointed this out on, on a show last weekend. Marianne Voss seems to be uh, recovered from that n- nagging injury she had, that, that artery problem. So that's going to make for a good season too. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, I think Marianne Voss is... Of course, she's, you know, in the last part of her career, but, you know, she's able to pick her objectives. You know, the, her win in Omlop against Lotto Kopecky was amazing. Um, today was probably a bit too much, too much climbing for her, but uh, she's back. She's back. And uh, whenever she says, okay, this is, this is an objective, they're going to have to have her in mind for sure. Cool. Uh, you know, let's let's move on from this. I think we uh, have one slot left, and we do travel for Perry Roubaix. You could be mm-hmm. hanging out with Johan is your director, George is your teammate, and uh, Museu Johan Museu is going to join. Like, wow, catch a live podcast, ride those roads with those guys, rides the cobbles. I think you get to ride twice too, right? Yeah, uh, we have a ride on a casual ride on Friday, a um, little ride on the cobbles. We're going to go visit uh, Johan's bed and breakfast and then also the Tour of Flanders Museum in Oudenaarde that day. Oh, cool. On Saturday, we're doing the Gran Fondo as the move team. Um, so, you know, very special. And then on Sunday, the VIP experience of the professional race with George and with Johan present all the time. So, highly recommended. Awesome. So if you want, if you want to join us on that, uh, you can email the move at we do dot team, or you can go get some information, click on it at our website. We do dot team. You'll see an icon for travel at the very top. And, and I'm and, very, I'm very excited about it. I've done Paris today 17 times, but I've never been there as a fan. So I'm oh, wow. really excited to stand on the side of the road and watch these guys flying by on Sunday. Cool. I, I've done it zero times. That's why I will not be there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad that I have a zero next to my name on that. Also, <laughs> folks, if if uh, we're, we're talking to you guys uh, just on all the platforms, but uh, if you want to become a member, the, the, this show is great. I love doing the show. We all love it. But the banter beforehand, the pre-show meetings, the, what we call the production <laughs> meetings, I mean, this shit is next level. Like, uh, we're pretty irreverent on the show. Uh, uh, the member meeting... Uh, the production meeting is even well yeah it's even more so you can check that out at we do dot team also follow us on socials anywhere on social instagram at we do facebook TikTok, uh you know all these fancy things you kids do but yeah follow us on uh, socials and also subscribe to our channel if you like it write us a review if you don't like it i don't know go get a cup of coffee and if you <laughs> miss if you missed the move legends with uh mm. ekimov vlakasov I always, Vlakoslav, I can never say his wow, name right. No, no. Yeah, yeah, just, 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 just stick, just just stick with Eki. 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 Just, just stick with Eki. That's just, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't even try the last, just abbreviate the last name. Eki. It's a, it's a great interview. Uh, Johan and George did a great job with that. And uh, that was a recent one. If you have not caught it, it's, it's, it's really good. And then if, there's also the Garen Thomas one in there. That's uh, yep. a really good and more, more to and more to And more to come. That's right. More we'll put come. that up on the screen. So make it easy for y'all. Um, yep. Anyways, all right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's going to be a good season. I mean, this uh, we said it. Like these guys are all <laughs> setting themselves up for. It's going to be just going to be a showdown all season. Exciting. Yep. All right. All right, guys. All the douches. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what Pogachar said today. Literally, he he should have just said that in the. Uh, that would be yeah. fun. It, we know be. we've made it when we get a kid like Pogachar to be like, all right, here's what I'm going to do start have my team control it's gonna start raining there's this hard climb with 80 to go i'm gonna attack alone and i'll see you in the bushes <laughs>